Hello, my name is Jack Hirschman. I'm at City Lights Books. And I'm going to read a section a bit from the book by Henry Miller, The Tropic of Cancer. In 1963, I was at the trial of this book in Los Angeles. And I was asked to read a section about a whore and a pimp. I couldn't locate it just going through this book uh, just a bit ago but I'm going to read another section. But I read that section about the whore and the pimp, and the prosecutor asked, do I think that C-U-N-T was an obscene word? I said, why are you spelling it out? I'm not a child. And the jury, of course, burst into laughter, and he continued, do you think F-U-C-K is an obscene word? And again I answered, and then I left the stand, and I had to go back to UCLA, I was teaching then, and, uh, and I called John Espy, the colleague who organized that, uh, that, those testimonies for, for Bonnie Rossett, the publisher, and he told me over the phone that uh, they threw out the case in 40 minutes after hearing three or four more other people. and. Uh, so as I said, I read this, that section, now I'm just going to read a bit from the book because it's still, it's still in such a culturally backward country as this. It is still a work that is charged with obscenity of love. When I look down into this fucked out cunt of a whore, I feel the whole world beneath me a world tottering and crumbling, a world used up and polished like a leper's skull. If there were a man who dared to say all that he thought of this world, there would not be left him a square foot of ground to stand on. When a man appears, the world bears down on him and breaks his back. There are always too many rotten pillars left standing, too much festering humanity for man to bloom. The superstructure is a lie and the foundation is a huge quaking fear. If in intervals of centuries there does appear a man with a despair, desperate, hungry look in his eye, a man who would turn the world upside down in order to create a new race, the love that he brings to the world is turned to bile and he becomes a scourge. If now and then we encounter pages that explode, pages that wound and scar, that ring groans and tears and curses, know that they come from a man with his back up, a man whose only defense is left are his words, and his words are always stronger than the lying, crushing weight of the world, stronger than all the racks and wheels which the cowardly invent to crush out the miracle of personality. If any man ever dared to translate all that in, is in his heart, to put down what is really his experience, what is truly his truth, I think that the world would go to smash, that it would be blown to smithereens and no God, no accident, no will could ever again assemble the pieces, the atoms, the indestructible elements that have gone to make up the, the world. In the 400 years since the last devouring soul appeared, the last man to know the meaning of ecstasy, there has been a cons constant and steady decline of man in art, in thought, in action. The world is pooped out. There isn't a dry fart left. Who that has a desperate, hungry eye can have the slightest regard for these existent governments, laws, codes, principles, ideals, ideas, totems and taboos. If anyone knew what it meant to read the riddle of that thing which today is called a crack or a hole, 
if anyone had the least feeling of mystery about the phenomenon which are labeled obscene, this world would crack asunder. It is the obscene horror, the dry, fucked out aspect of things which makes this crazy civilization look like a crater. It is this great yawning gulf of nothingness which the creative spirits and mothers of the race carry between their legs when a hungry, desperate spirit appears and makes the guinea pig squeal. It is because he knows where to put the live wire of sex, because he knows that beneath the hard carapace of indifference there is concealed the ugly gash, the wound that never heals, and he puts the live wire right between the legs. He hits below the belt, scorches the very gizzards. It is no use putting on rubber gloves. All that can be coolly and intellectually handled belongs to the carapace, and a man who is intent on creation always dives beneath to the open wound, to the festering, obscene horror. He hitches his dynamo to the tenderest parts. If only blood and pus gush forth, it is something. The dry, fucked-out crater is obscene. More obscene than anything is inertia. More blasphemous than the bloodiest oath is paralysis. If there is only a gaping wound left, then it must gush forth, though it produced nothing but toads and bats and homunculi.